s- still on the topic of messianic expectations, but kind of changing lanes a little bit, it is often asserted that ancient Jews had no conception of a Messiah who would suffer and die. But you argue that there was an established tradition within Judaism about a suffering Messiah. This belief right. arose from Midrash on Daniel and a messianic interpretation of Isaiah 53, which is every Christian's favorite like prophecy fulfilled thing. But what mm-hmm. is the evidence that not just Christians, but ancient non-Christian Jews believed in a suffering Christ? Oh, just simply uh, have a lot of li- uh, early uh, Jewish literature that that understands Isaiah 53, the suffering servant of Isaiah 53, to be the Messiah. There's more in favor of that in- interpretation than any other interpretation of Isaiah 53. Wow. Um, you know, it's just... Um, a, a, a great medieval rabbi, uh, Nachmanides, the Ramban, uh, sort of 12th century, I think. Um, I'm not so good on centuries. Um, uh, said that he disagrees, but he conceded that most of the rabbis of the Midrash and the Talmud, uh, whom we call Chazal, or sages, may, they, uh, uh, may their memory be blessed, uh, thought that Isaiah 53 was about the Messiah. And there were stories in the Talmud of, of the Messiah uh, sick, ailing uh, as a beggar at the gates of Jerusalem, waiting to be called to save the world and, and c- completely bandaged up and taking his bandages off and, and replacing them one bandage at a time, as opposed to doing his whole uh, wounds at the same time, so that if God calls him to save the world, he'll be he'll be ready to go. He won't have to say, "Wait, I have to put my bandages back on." So uh, there's it, it's it's just um, it's just simply a mistake to uh, and a very commonly held mistake, both by Jews and by Christians, to assume that the idea of a, of the a suffering. Uh, Messiah is foreign to uh, non-Christian Jews. Hmm. Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong in this interpretation, Mm. but when I read the New Testament, it seems like Jews of Jesus' day weren't, uh, at least the vast majority, were not expecting a, a suffering Christ. Because Mark 8 has Peter rebuke his rabbi, Jesus, when Jesus says the Son of Man must suffer, die, and rise. Relatedly, in in 1 Corinthians 1, Paul says the word of the cross seems like foolishness to many people. He specifically writes, we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews. Do you think this could reasonably be considered evidence against the idea that there was an established Jewish messianic expectation of our suffering Christ? Yes, it could be. It could it could be taken that way. Nonetheless, it is simply not the case that certainly that all Jews uh, did not believe in the suffering Messiah because the evidence is right out there. It's right out, and it's actually uh, among the Jewish intellectual leaders that we find it, the, the rabbis that we find this view so well. It was contested, it was contested then, it was contested later, as I said, uh, Nachmanides, who was perhaps one of the two or three greatest Jewish thinkers of the Middle Ages, rejected the idea completely. Uh, but he but he himself recognized that it was canonical. So uh, um, the evidence you've cited is, is evidence that there certainly was opposition to that idea or that it was a shocking idea to, um, uh, to, to rural Jews in the Galilee, but uh, that's not sufficient to, uh, you know, and, and in Mark in particular, the, um, the disciples, the apostles, are not so highly regarded for their intellectual capacities. I mean, there's a lot, and they make a lot of mistakes. So, 
that's that you know I don't know exactly what's going on with that whether it's a representation of of a Christian Markan community and their struggles with other Jews at at, at the time so they but uh, but whatever it was right it, uh, it's it's interesting and it's important uh, evidence but it's not definitive.